Hi there and welcome to the let's play of FTL Faster Than Light. I'm Baron. And FTL actually is a roguelike with spaceships. Uh, that means you command a spaceship pretty much that game really gives you that Star Trek feel. If you ever wanted to be the captain of the Enterprise, commanding people to do things and man stations and fight off other ships and <coughs> beam to other ships and yeah, if you ever wanted, if you always wanted to do that, this is your chance to actually do it. You control one spaceship in this game. You fly through a hostile universe. Try to stay alive and get as far as you can. If you're really good or really lucky, you will reach the end of the game. I guess in most cases you probably need to be both very good and lucky. Because that is the nature of a roguelike game. I mean, you progress through the game, you upgrade a ship, your crewman gets skills and stuff, but eventually you probably come across a situation that you can't handle and you die and you start over again. That's what this game is all about. Yes, um, the game was released yesterday, I bought it on GOG, I installed it, I played the tutorial and tinkered around with the game a bit to familiarize myself with the mechanics, and I think we're good to go now. <coughs> so let's start a new game. Here we have our ship. Apparently you can choose between several ships, but you have to unlock them first. Apparently I didn't unlock anything, I only got to the fourth sector or something. So yeah, we have to pick this one, the Kestrel Cruiser. This ship, no, this class of ship was decommissioned from Federation service years ago. After a number of refits and updating, this classic ship is ready for battle. And apparently you can switch between two types of layouts, two types of layouts, but apparently you have to unlock, unlock that too, and I didn't do it. So we only have the type A now. That's what the ship looks from the outside. Here we can take a look at the rooms. <coughs> Are we gonna rename it the Castro? No, I don't want that. It's going to be the USS. Good. Hope. Yeah, that, if you know uh, what kind of reverence that is, you get a cookie. Okay, and we have a crew here. It uh, consists of four members, uh, yeah, but you can only get three at the beginning apparently. And I thought, uh, why not uh, let other LPers, well you know LPers that I like and respect and whose work I really enjoy, man uh, my ship here. So I asked uh, three LPers, because, well, I didn't really think that all would reply actually, but actually all three did reply. And they said yes, uh, they are feeling very positive about being on board of my ship here. You know, I, I wouldn't use someone's name without their permission first. <coughs> so I'm very glad that all three of them said they want to be on board of this mission here, but that means that there's no space for a barring character here. That probably means you have to think of me as the, the person behind the stage pulling the strings or something. Okay, so we can customize our characters. You can change the gender. Maria obviously is female. Well, not necessarily. Klaus Maria von Brandauer is a male actor, and Klaus Maria von Weber was a male. Uh, com how do you say that? A guy that writes music, compositor, componist. I have no idea. You know, he wrote music. Okay, but female is okay because this is going to be Lady Gilvan. And she's going to be the captain of our ship. Captain Gilvan, yes. Since Voyager we know that really no harm will come from having a female captain. I mean, it's not like she will get uh, stranded in the one crowd road 75,000 light years away from home. So no. Her gentle hand will lead this ship nice and firm and safely. Yeah, I, I, well, if you if you didn't watch Lady Gilvan's LPs, you should do it. She is one of the best LPs I know. 
she has a really light-hearted and fun way of helping. If you watch her videos, it always makes you, it almost always makes you smile. It's very nice. Um, sadly, because of bad health, she didn't record in the last months. But uh, there is a huge backlog for you to watch, and um, she has uploaded a ton of videos during her days. So yeah, if you like it, uh, tell her, and I really hope she gets better soon because I really miss her. So here we have Captain Gilvan. Aki? No, it's not gonna be Aki. Wait, is that supposed to be a girl too? No, this is gonna be a guy. This here will be Lieutenant Game Hoarder. <laughs> well, uh, you probably know who he is, right? I mean, he's he's the guy with the <laughs> with the foul-mouthed LPs. I mean, he does really interesting and funny LPs, although they are not for the faint of heart, I must say, because he does uh, curse up a storm quite often. Um, but at least to me, it's funny as hell. Uh, maybe it has something to do with me not being a native speaker, but if someone curses, it doesn't insult me, at least. At least when it's happening in English. I don't feel insulted by that. I, I think it's cool. And he has that thing with the voices. He always does uh, special voices for his characters. Or almost always. I tried that too uh, quite some time ago, but I found it really breaks the game immersion for me. If I have to concentrate on doing a voice and trying to remember what I what kind of voice I gave the character the last time, it really takes me out of the game. So, well, I don't enjoy it. If you don't enjoy it, you shouldn't do it. Therefore, I don't do it. But Game Horde apparently does enjoy it, and for him it comes naturally, and it's really fun. So we have Captain Gilvan, Lieutenant Game Horde, and the last guy on our ship will be Anson Elana Ray. The third LP here. I mean, he is he mostly LP is um, PC games, but he doubles into console games every now and then too. Uh, Lady Gilvan mostly LPs um, console games. I, I I guess girls just have a knack for console games. I mean, there are PC playing girls too, out there, but apparently not as many as console playing. I don't really know wh why 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 that is the case, but apparently it is. And Elena Ray has a really nice no bullshit approach to his LPs. He's really, well, he LPs them in a w way that is quite close to the way I LP games. Games he just sits down and plays the game and records himself while he is doing that. He doesn't try to be funny when he isn't. He doesn't try to do any fancy stuff. Uh, of course, he is funny every now and then, but it just happens naturally. And I really like that. Okay, so the crew is complete. We have Captain Gilvan, Lieutenant Game Hoarder, and Anson Elana Ray. You could change a uh, switch between two <coughs> modes here of difficulty. Easy, obviously, is easier. <laughs> it gives you an increased scrap reward and easier enemy generation. Uh, but normal mode just gives you the standard scrap rewards and enemies, but you get a higher score. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. And then, and then how do you measure your success in a in a roguelike game? It's mean, I mean, it's not like you're going to win the re to reach the win state <laughs> that often. So, well, if you die, the game gives you a score to tell you how far you got, and that's <coughs> how you actually me me measure progress in the game. If you get further away in the next try and get more points than in the last try, you know you did better. Okay, I think it's okay to start with with normal. And we're actually in the game. The data you carry is vital to the remaining Federation fleet. You'll need supplies for the journey, so make sure to explore each sector bef mo before moving on to the next. But get to the exit before the pursuing rebel fleet can catch up. Tip. Weapon order. Rearrange a weapon or a drone schematic by dragging it into the desired position. The leftmost slot will be last to power down if the system is damaged. Okay, that means we switch the blazer to the left. <coughs> okay, here we have our systems. Shields. Engines. Life support. Med bay. We don't really need med bay now. We need power down. Weapons. 
right here we have subsistence piloting <coughs> sensors and those those systems use energy those don't and here we have our energy bar right here we have our crew captain gilvin is at the helm where she's supposed to be game holder should attend to the weapon phalanx and no yeah you you activate a crew member with left clicking and then you send him somewhere with right clicking and see <coughs> we, we sent Elena Ray away and now we see the shields uh, are fully powered but unmanned if somebody actually mans the shields they get a bonus <coughs> it's the same with weapons and with piloting so it's a bad idea to let uh, the character stand around here doing nothing send them to a station alrighty oh yeah and of course I will put the link to the game where you can actually buy it into the description of this video you can buy it either from the devs you could buy it from GOG or you could buy it from Steam I bought it from GOG because that's how I roll I like GOG and I will put of course links to the other peers in the description of this video but you could also check out my LPers that I recommend box on my channel. Alrighty. I think we did all the exploring. We have 16 units of fuel. Each jump consumes one full fuel unit. We have 8 missiles and no drone parts, but that's no biggie because we don't have drones either. Oh yeah, here we have a ship. See? We can upgrade that if we have scrap. We have 10 units. Scrap sort of is the is sort of the currency, the universal currency in this game. You need scrap to upgrade your systems. We also need scrap to repair your ship and you need scrap to buy things at stores. Here we have our crew members, as you can see. They can't develop skills. They don't have any because they didn't do anything yet. And that's our equipment here. Okay, let's jump. Apparently we here have a store. That's rather useless because we don't have anything to buy yet. Let's head towards the distress call then. And we are in a civilian sector in sector 1. We jump out. <coughs> Hello. We used our last FTL fuel to jump to the station. The indicator burned out husk debris warped metal. As you can see the war must have spread to the sector. We have been stranded ever since. Okay. That's a slug interceptor. Yeah, we give them some fuel. I mean, if we were in a bad spot, we would hope that somebody gives us fuel too. Thank you. Here, have this extra scrap as payment. Thanks. There's another store here. We don't really need to go to a store yet. Let's go to... I don't know. I don't like nebulas. A nebula here will make the fleet pursuit slower, but will disrupt your senses. <coughs> okay, let's go into the nebula. Danger. It's hard to see why, but this beacon is apparently a tourist destination. One of the ships at the small uh, station is offering a deal. We could trade two missiles against two drone pods. I'm not going to do that. Missiles are more important for me right now. What does that do? You're inside the nebula. Yeah, okay. So we're pursued by the rebels. They come in from this side here. We have to stay ahead of them. If they catch up with us, bad things happen. As soon as you arrive, a small mantis ship detaches from a wreck and jumps away. You must have interrupted their salvage operation because you find a weapon ready to be installed. A small weapon bomb. A small bomb? Let's take a look at that. Self-teleporting explosive that damages systems and crew but not the hull. Can target your own ship. It requires a missile. Okay, so you could use missiles using the Artemis missile launcher or the small bomb. Damages does not damage the hull, but it's a good thing, I think, to take out a system. I think to be sneezed at. Let's switch that around then. Okay, here's the exit. I don't want to go to the exit yet. And here you see where the rebels are coming in from. Let's head to that. I mean, you could try to rush through the systems, but I want to explore the systems too, because you never know what you might find, right? You 
discover a nearby planet speckled with settlements, although none responds to your hails. I don't seem to encounter much. A missile shoots across your bow when the job completes. Your scan quickly reveals a ship with pirate markings pursuing an unknown vessel. The pirate hails you. Damn it! We weren't expecting company. Stay away and you could profit. And they try to bribe us with one missile, one drone part and nine scrap units. But we try to be a hero and attack the pirate. The pirate ship stops its pursuit and locks weapons into your ship. Okay, red alert. All hands battle stations. We power up our weapons. We don't have enough power to power all three of them. But we can power the burst laser on the small bomb. <coughs> and as you see, if we power things up, uh, the power all decreases. So, um, here you see the enemy ship. It has, of course, a bridge. It has life support systems, it has a shield generator. That's the what we have here, the engine. Uh, weapon systems and the door controls. I always like to take out the weapon systems first, because that's where they actually do the damage to my ship. I don't like that. And now we have our first battle. The systems are charging now. They missed us. What? Apparently, I didn't hit it. That's not a good thing. Power down, used our team as missile. Ow. Okay, I think we got it now. Yeah, the weapons are... Uh, it's, uh, I don't really know whether there's a way to get rid of all the targeting stuff at once. Ah, if you click on it again, you can get it. So as you can see, the weapon systems are damaged. Now he uh, withdrew his weapons. Can't do us any damage now. That's good. I mean, now we go after their shield generator. Okay, they improved the offer now. Six units of fuel, five mi uh, missiles, and eight scrap units. Um, I think that's quite a good offer. The problem is, if we continue our assault, chances are, well, of course, we will probably win this battle. But they will um, explode and we don't get as much stuff. So we accept that. And jump out. Although we could have gotten uh, some things from the ship they were pursuing too. The beacon at first glance seems home to a junkyard. Upon closer inspection it reveals itself to be a ramshackle market. One trader has a deal that catches your eyes. He wants two drone parts for six fuel units. That would be good, but we don't have drone parts. Okay. And see the rebels are coming in from behind, that's not a good thing. You detect a rebel scout on an attack approach to a small refueling outpost. Their weapons are charged but they're not firing yet. Okay, we intervene to defend the outpost. <coughs> the rebel responds to your threat. I don't know who you are, but no one defies the rebel fleet. They move to engage. Okay, red alert, all hands, battle stations. What do you have? Okay, we attack your weapon systems. Maybe we should switch that. Uh, the small bomb doesn't seem to be as useful as I hoped it would be. Ow. Shit. 
That's not good. Shields are critical. But his sh weapons are damaged a little at least. That's a good thing. I hope to take them out with the next shot. Wait a second. You're no longer... Okay, the weapons are down. And... Now we attack the shield generator. Gilvan is repairing the uh, cockpit. Okay. I don't like that. Oh, I missed! Game mode, what are you doing at the weapons console? Captain, help Anson Ayla to repair stuff. Okay, we have won. We get three fuel units, one missile and 17 scrap units. That's not too nice because we uh, at least used four missiles here. But okay. Ah, the outpost hails us. The pompous bastards expected free service just because they defeated the Federation. Take this for help. Three more fuel, fuel units and 16 scrap units. That's a good thing. Repair stuff. Okay. We should power the med bay and get Anson Ayla and Captain Gilvan into the med bay. Hello. Thank you. In here. To heal up a bit. Thank you. Ayla back in here. The captain returns to the bridge. Okay, uh, we have 80 scrap units, that's a good thing. Maybe we should increase something here. Let's upgrade our shields. And the reactor. So that can be powered down again. And now we have twice the shield power, that's a good thing. We move on. Not necessarily to the exit yet. Because we might find something nice elsewhere. You find a rebel automated scout floating near this beacon. Despite its pristine condition, it appears to be deactivated. Uh, if I try to download the ship's data stores, this will probably not work. Don't risk activating it and just strip the ship for any useful scrap. Thanks. And we should probably leave to the exit now. You arrive at the long range beacon. When the FTL drive is charged, you can jump to the next sector. There's a black market hub here. You receive a message. These Danger are dangerous times. If you have extra military grade explosives, we'll be gladly pay for them. So you could pay fi trade five missiles for 15 scrap. That means three units of scrap for a missile. No, I don't do that. I only have eight missiles. I keep them. Thank you. We jump out. To the next sector. Okay. This was sector 1, now we go to sector 2, we couldn't go to a any control sector, that would be a friendly one, or we could go to rebel control sector, that would be a hostile one. Let's go to the any control sector. You have arrived in any space. The fall of the Federation has brought tough times for these robotic lifeforms, but they are usually willing to help. It's like the Pospies, I like that. Okay, the exit is here. Let's head into this general direction then. You arrive in a system and immediately discover a pirate ship nearby. Strangely, scans indicate there are no lifeforms aboard. 
to salvage anything useful but find no clue as to the whereabouts of the form crew. We get one missile, one drone part, 20 scrap and the anti-personnel drone. I like that. We can probably upgrade our reactor some more now. Thank you. Now we still have enough power to activate the med bay if we really need it. That's a good thing. Let's jump out. There's a distress call. Okay. Let's investigate. A ship without life forms within a nearby dense asteroid field is giving off the distress call. Uh, shall we investigate? It could be dangerous. Yeah, search for the ship. You find the decaying remains of some kind of ship coated with ice or crystal. You send some crew aboard to explore. Nearly everything is either destroyed or unidentifiable. But one of the weapons appears salvageable and there is a strange stasis pod that catches your eye. It looks like a massive asteroid is in a direct collision course with the derelict ship. You have to pull your crew out, but they want to grab what they can first. What do they take? They take the stasis chamber. There may be somebody alive in there. Your crew drags the pod back to your ship before the asteroid crashes into the ship, shattering through the crystal coating and destroying the ship. The pod appears to be functioning, but you see nothing but shards of crystal inside. Perhaps someone else will know how to open it. We got some scrap and a damaged stasis pod. This bizarre alien artifact appears to be barely operational. It has no practical function, but perhaps someone can repair it. Let's take a look at our skills. Captain Gilvan is developing some piloting skills and a little repair skills. But then Game Hoarder is getting better at the weapons console. And Anson Ayla apparently is better at repairing than uh, <laughs> manipulating the shields. Okay. Let's head into this direction. You receive a distress call from a nearby angry ship. Assistance requested. Danger present. Im imminent destruction. Okay, we respond to the call and move in to assist. Oops. You approach to find the Mantis ship assaulting a small Angi space station. You prepare for a fight. Alright, red alert, all hands, battle stations. What do you have? Oh, those weapons do look menacing. They have a teleporter here. Oh, that's, this sucks. They will probably beam in here. Let's take out the weapons first. Intruders detected. Um, maybe game holder should stay here. And Anson Ayla and the captain should take care of that. We should probably power up the med bay because we probably need it. Can can you go in there and help them? No. The problem is that those mantises are actually better at fighting. Than our crew members are. Okay, you get in here, you fight the mantises. Okay, game order has to get out too. We turn back. And yeah, the sensors are destroyed. It's not that much of a biggie now. We have to deal with the intruders. No, stay here. They attack the shields now. Okay. That worked. Gilvan back to the helm. Ella, stay here. And game order back to the weapons. Okay. We have won that battle. We fought off the intruders and destroyed the ship. Very good. The Mantis ship breaks apart. We get one fuel unit, two missiles and 20 scrap units. Contact the Angie. 
They thank you for the assistance and when you tell them of your mission, one of the Angies asks if he can assist your crew. You welcome him aboard. We get two missiles, a drone pod and 13 scrap units and have another crew member. That's very good. That's him here. Um, crewman Pipa, look, he's an Angie. It's unclear if the Angie are particularly organic or entirely mechanical, but it's well known that they make exceptional engineers. Their repair speed is doubled, but their combat damage is halved. Alrighty. So you get in here to repair stuff, and I think Anson Ayla was also quite good at repairing. You go here, and you get your stuff back too. Then you That means you will man... Uh, the engine room, you're the chief engineer. And Snaila should get healed up too. The captain returns to the bridge. Alrighty. So we have 66 scrap units. That's a good thing. I didn't see. Uh, oh, the rebels are coming in too. I didn't see. Uh, storm yet. Federation sympathizers contact you as you arrive. We know your mission could, should be secret, so don't ask how we know about it. Take the schematic. It's all we can do to help. We get 15 more scrap units and an anti-ship beam drone. Alrighty. And we have played this for half an hour now. So how about we save and quit. So I thank you very much for watching and we'll see each other in the next video. Bye.